purpose of the artists wānanga is to provide an opportunity for artists to engage with the rock art heritage of their tūpuna but also from the trust perspective it's a way of carrying that matauranga forward because the rock art sites themselves are quite fragile their their lifespan is limited so it's a way of carrying it forward for future generations we got a grant from the Naitahu Fund to assist us with running this wānanga and without that grant we wouldn't have been able to run it so greatly appreciate that and on another level it's providing us an opportunity to learn more about the art from a different perspective because the artists see different things than we do in the art. The conventions of rock drawing, they're similarly as significant as the conventions that sit behind ko whaiwhai, behind weaving, behind the kairo. All those conventions have vast knowledge behind them. And so there's vast knowledge behind our rock drawing. We need to find ways of, um, uh, I guess, uh, articulating that knowledge, finding ways for people to uh, encounter that knowledge in their own way. Uh, I think that the, the, the Tiana Rock Art Centre is one way that people can start to pick up on that matauranga that's there. Um, but I do think it needs people to to study and to um, work with the drawings through artists' eyes or through creative eyes to understand those systems that are there. Uh, and then we've got people like Brian and Amanda who come from, you know, the the opposite end of the the academic scale, if you like, from, from the archaeological side. And then we've got our people, our, our local uh, whānau and families from the areas where the rock art is who know the stories about what, what, what the rock arts might mean and what, they might, uh, what their significances might be. And so all those things need to be brought together. The knowledge of the rock art is part of the knowledge that makes us naitau. Koina, he, he pai noa ki te titiro ki ngā whakāhua ki roto i ngā pokapoka me te ipurangi i ngā rehe pai ake ki au ki te kiti te wāhi i noho ai ngā tūpuna i noho rātou i, um, I whai kai tō, rā, tō rātou kainga ngā kainga o ngā rā mua uh, ai me te kiti i ngā mahi toi he hā o rātou he hā ngā, ngā mia whakahirahira ki a rātou uh, tēnā I mean, what, what we're experiencing here at the moment is, is, is just stunning. I'm, I mean, I'm just, it's um, quite overwhelming, really. Just being with the works um, from a wairua perspective, a perspective, I suppose, of, you know, just feeling the spirit of the works, um, feeling, being with them physically, you know, is, is so important, you know, for us to be here as a group with them as well. Um, I think it's really important, you know, to come and to, to meet with the works. As far as responding to Ngātahu visual culture um, within within your work, um, there's conversations here that are that are that are important, and um, I think every one of us who are here and, and others who have been here before. Um, can find ways to respond to it um, in our own different ways, in, in the ways that we, you know, we, we we know in the past, and bringing what's happening here now to lead us into the future, I suppose, of, 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 of making it relevant for us as artists, but also making it relevant for for the rest of the iwi, I think, too, you know. My own view is basically that art is um, a work that expresses a life philosophy, in this case, the um, the intimate relationship with the landscape, uh, and the rock art really is the closest medium that does that, to my mind. Um, where you're dealing, you're actually a applying your I ideas and your philosophy to the earth itself. People from any culture can appreciate the artwork that has been done. We did have Professor Jean Klotz from France out here very recently who is a world expert on rock art. 
So on a world stage, <coughs> this artwork yeah, features yeah, yeah. very highly. I've always wanted to have a look at all these things and for me it's an exploration of part of my heritage um, and my whakapapa and my journey to find that out. Um, so it's really part of you know, what I want to do and also the imagery is really um, exciting and interesting and I want to understand the you know the wider discussion around using those images incorporating that perhaps into your work or um, where, where it might come into finding my identity within that. At the start um, Pete and Fiona L were the um they recognise the value of the rock art and, that. and of course over the years I've had lots of people come down and look at it. So to try and preserve it, they've sectioned off a certain area here and um, it's been put under a QET covenant and so at that stage Aro Whenua was um, invited to come and work with them. So our Runaka members were part of the team that came in here and cut the tracks that were on there down to here and helped do bit of the planting and that and um, purely because it's ours we wanted to help look after it and Pete and Fiona were generous enough to include us in the, in the process which very really happened back in those days. The belief is this valley we're in, um, it, there's more valley that runs up here, um, it, it's pretty obvious that the mole would have been hunted, chased into the swamp area that's here and um, our people would have harvested them. Also up on the cliff tops there, there's what I think are very old shelters that have been made out of limestone because they, they're too unnatural to look natural. They're, they're obviously been man-made um, shelters and that made out of limestone slabs. Um, whether we do some archaeology up there and suss it out to see whether there's any middens and bones or whatever up there, that could tell a better story than just guessing what it is. The opportunity to come and visit with uh, our ancestors and our tongue is, is something that I, you know, anytime I get that opportunity I'll take it.